Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to talk about Bitcoin tipping, how you can tip with Bitcoin on Twitter and what that means for micropayments. And before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to Ledin. Ledin is the best place to earn or, or be able to borrow against your Bitcoin ad using it as collateral. So you can take Bitcoin, borrow dollars using it as collateral or lend out your Bitcoin and earn a yield. Check it out, the link is below. And okay, let's go ahead and jump into the main uh, topic for today. So Bitcoin micropayments on Twitter. Now, um, before I dig in a little bit further, this is written first. So what you're seeing here is my newsletter. My newsletter comes out first on Thursdays. So this is only for paid subscribers. And when you subscribe to it, you get a newsletter every single week. I publish it first on Thursdays, and then I publish it later on Sundays on YouTube. And that's why you're watching it now. Okay, so let's dig in here. Back in 2015, I joined a startup called Change Tip. So Change Tip was a kind of cool micropayments company back in the 2015 era. And what they did is we enabled micropayments over social media. So the way that we used to phrase this, or at least at least how we pitched it, was uh, change tip is sending a tip is more than a like, it's more than a favorite, it's the next level of support or engagement for content creators. And so how it worked is, and this worked across a wide variety of platforms like Twitch, Twitter, Reddit. I think Reddit and Twitter were the two most popular ones. In fact, the idea from this came from a Reddit tipping bot or a Dogecoin tipping bot all the way back from the 2014 era. And so the way that you would phrase it was this, like send at Bob a $1 tip. And that's at change tip. So the change tip bot would see that. It would then read to the string and identify the at Bob and the value. And then if Bob had an account or didn't have an account, it would assign that dollar value in Bitcoin to Bob. And so what that meant was uh, if Bob had an account, he could log into his account and that value was there. If Bob did not have an account, he could OAuth into it, which means he could use his social profile to log in to change tip to then redeem the tip. And we also had really cool ones where you could create your own terminology, like uh, send a beer on me or an emoji. You could send the, you'd have the emoji one, like at the beer emoji. And that was a predefined amount that would be sent, or that would be created by the user and you could send that amount of value. Here's a good example. Bashko, by the way, is an admin on the Bitcoin subreddit, and he was, a, I believe, a part-time team member. If that if that's incorrect, Bashko, let me know. Um, it's been a long time, so I, I forget. So this is him sending a tip to Jim Harper, have a beer on me, and then at change tip. So this is an example from Twitter from 2014 in terms of how people were working on it. Uh, change tip came around back in 2014. I came around a little bit. I joined the team a little bit later in 2015. So we had a ton of new signups of folks OAuthing or using their social accounts to log in um, to redeem the free money that was tipped. But retention was super low. We never really found product market fit. Product market fit is determining if your product is solving a problem for the market and will it stick around. And and so why did we see, see that? Um, and by the way, here's an example of how the change tip bot would reply to a user if they hadn't uh, created an account yet. So this one was uh, this this account here, sent Nick Zabo a dollar and looks like he hasn't redeemed it. And so they would send a link to go redeem the tip. And so it's been almost 60 years. So I, I struggle to remember some of the specifics around why exactly it failed. I think there's a couple of reasons too early. There wasn't a big enough addressable market. Um, there was not discovering the make magic moments for long-term engagement, which is also called retention. So what are the repeatable mechanics that people would want to see to come back and keep tipping? And then there's also the mental cost of transacting. And Nick zabo has got some great thoughts on this where he talks about the mental cost or the decision fatigue behind making many, 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 many decisions around tiny, tiny amounts of payment would be too great and too prohibitive to make micropayments a thing. And so I agree with him, it is a very difficult, but I don't think it's an insurmountable problem. So I think there's like a little bit of like UX, UX by the way stands for user experience, a UX threshold that hasn't been achieved yet for tipping and micropayments. And you know, as we're going through here, before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to Choice, one of my sponsors. As most of you know, when you hodl, you don't have to pay taxes, but what if I told you that you could hodl and when you eventually sell your Bitcoin, you wouldn't have to pay any taxes then? Well, I didn't think that was possible until I found a Choice IRA. Choice is the best retirement account to set up for Bitcoiners that lets you buy and hold Bitcoin in stocks without paying a dime to the government. And how does that work? Choice is an IRA. They have IRAs and Roth IRAs, which means it's a special type of retirement account where you don't pay taxes if you hodl until a certain age, along with some other stipulations. And the best part, 
you can self custody your Bitcoin with Choice, which means that you don't have to trust Choice or anyone else with your Bitcoin or your private keys. It's the perfect retirement solution for Bitcoiners. The best time to start stacking sats was 11 years ago. The second best time is today. Search stack sats in the app store or choiceapp.io slash held. Link is included in the description below. Go get, check it out right now. You know, I think it, it, tipping for me is like a really important, cool phenomenon that kind of attracted me to Bitcoin in the early days. Later, you know, really saw that it wasn't viable on chain. But the idea of micropayments, I still think is very, very cool. So Twitter just launched Lightning Tipping. Now, this is a big deal. I'm really thrilled. I love Twitter, like what Jack Dorsey's doing, love the team that he's working with, Strike. And so really big fan of what they're doing here. So I think that there are some ways that they can find this make magic moment that my team and my, you know, the folks I used to work for at Change Tip, we failed to find. And some of that is, um, you know, being able to tip on an individual tweet. I could only tip the creator, but I couldn't tip a tweet. For me, I think there's a special relationship between the creator and the content, and you want to tip either moments or content specifically. There could be a default amount uh, to tip when I automate for a tweet. For example, I could set five cents or a dollar or ma with a max limitation of a dollar a day um, where I could tip content creators, but I could do it in a way where I don't have to think about every single tip. There's also the value of like when I tip, maybe I want people to know. It's like when you walk up to the cash register and put in the 20 and everyone sees that, not the cash register, the tip jar, people see that and they're like, oh, that was really cool. Some people like that notoriety. So being able to, being able to show off a different type of engagement of like, man, wow, this tweet got $1,000 or this person tipped $1,000 individually on this tweet, that'd be really cool. And then I think subscription tipping is what ties this all together. I wanna tip X amount a month and spread it out amongst my favorite creators that I interact with the most. So for example, I like a th I give a thousand likes a month, take my $5 that I wanna donate in tips and allocate it pro rata based on the, on the thousand likes. I think something like that would be very low friction because I could go through and I'm just enjoying the Twitter experience. I'm scrolling through, liking stuff. I'm not having to have that mental cost of thinking through what do I wanna tip? I have, how many buttons do I have to press? I just weave that engagement into my normal interaction. And that's where I think that the true make magic moment here is weaving tipping into the native experience in the product, where it's not any extra thought, it's through the, my liking or replying or some other way. And you know, ultimately, there's this, there's this uh, thing that Twitter and other companies that engage with tipping in any sort of fashion have to figure out. Creators ultimately want consistent recurring revenue. We've seen this with different monetization methods getting baked into uh, platforms like Substack, Twitch, YouTube, and even Twitter. Twitter's coming out with, uh, they're coming out with, um, oh, it's the special type of tweet, uh, super tweets or super follows. Super follows are a subscription service where you get a special type of private Twitter content from your favorite creators. Ultimately, micropayments need to be merged with the subscription function. Like I said before, it's gotta be some sort of blended in with the experience and some sort of subscription function in order to satisfy the both, both the mental cost threshold for the transactor and the ROI for content creators. I hope you found this entertaining. This is a little bit shorter than most of my videos. If you liked this, give me a subscribe, give me a like, helps with the algorithm to get this content out to more people. Thanks and cheers.